An eagle glides across the African sky, eyes locked on movement below. It dives, wings folding, claws extended, and in an instant, the world erupts in sound and motion. A small Homo heidelbergensis screams as talons close around his shoulders. The bird lifts, struggling under the human's weight, dragging him across the ground before losing grip and vanishing into the balloon. Dust settles, silence returns, but fear lingers, heavy and primal. This is life half a million years ago. No walls, no safety, every shadow hides teeth. And yet, this is also the dawn of something extraordinary. Because these humans are learning that fear is not the end. Fear is a teacher. From the ridge, a band of Homo heidelbergensis moves in single file. Six figures, wrapped in animal hides, faces streaked with ash. Each carries a length of wood, sharpened at one end and hardened in fire. Spears. Ahead lies a watering hole, but so too do the dangers it attracts. The smell of mud, of life and death, drifts on the wind. A Panthera leo fossilis, an ancient lion twice the size of its modern kin, lies low in the reeds, tail twitching. The humans freeze. Their eyes meet the lions for a moment that feels eternal. Once, they would have fled. Today, they raise their spears. The lion growls, a sound that vibrates through bone. Then it charges. The first spear flies, misses. The second strikes shoulder. The beast rolls, blood dark against golden fur. Three more spear thrusts meet its leap. It collapses, shaking the earth. And in that collapse, the world shifts. For the first time, humans have not just survived a predator, they have conquered one. The carcass lies between them, breath still fading from the lion's chest. But the victory is short-lived. In the distance, vultures rise, and with them, hyenas, massive, bone-crushing, ancient beasts that follow the scent of blood. The humans know what comes next. They must move fast. Meat must be cut, carried, shared. Spears form a circle as others work. Sharp stone flakes slice through hide and muscle. A deep, rumbling growl echoes from the trees. From the shadows, a Megantarion, the saber-toothed cat, emerges. Its fangs gleam in the firelight, eyes reflecting red. The band backs up slowly, spears raised. The cat circles. Every movement is deliberate, predatory. It lunges. A spear flashes upward, meets its chest. Another strikes its flank. The cat thrashes, claws raking the air. Blood sprays the ground. Then it retreats, limping, defeated, vanishing into the darkness. The hunters stand trembling, but they do not run. Night falls. A small fire flickers beneath a rocky overhang. Sparks rise into the dark, carried on the wind like lost stars. Around it, the humans eat, not silently, but with low murmurs, gestures, grunts, the beginnings of communication. The lion meat sizzles, fat drips into flame. The smell draws more scavengers from the dark, but the fire's glow keeps them at bay. For the first time, fire is not just warmth, it is control, a shield, a symbol. The tribe's leader, broad-shouldered, scarred, eyes hard from years of struggle, holds up a spear, its tip blackened, the wood toughened by flame. He grips it, presses it into the earth. Around him, faces turn. In that moment, something passes between them, not words, but understanding. The world has changed, and 
they changed it with their hands. Morning comes with thunder. Dark clouds roll over the plain, swallowing the light. Rain lashes down, flattening grass, filling the air with the smell of wet soil. The hunters march onward, searching for shelter. Lightning cracks across the sky, and something worse follows. From the valley below, a rival band emerges. Eight figures, leaner, hungrier. They carry spears, too. For a heartbeat, both groups stare across the rain-soaked distance. Then, one man steps forward, shouts, a challenge. The tension snaps. Spear meets spear, mud churns. The cries of combat mix with thunder. The fight is not for land, not for vengeance, but for survival, for food. A strike lands true. Another spear pierces thigh. Then, lightning strikes nearby, splitting a tree, throwing both bands to the ground. The storm's fury ends the battle as suddenly as it began. When the rain finally fades, the survivors rise in silence. There is no victory, only endurance. By evening, the band reaches a wide river, swollen with flood. The bodies are exhausted, bruised, bleeding, but they must cross. On the other side, the herd paths continue, and where the herds go, life follows. They lash logs together with vine, testing the current. The first to step in is swept forward, nearly lost, but grasped by others. A chain of hands forms. The current roars. Spears double as poles, digging into the mud for balance. They make it across, battered but alive. And as they collapse on the far bank, the first light of dawn breaks through. A new sun, a new day. Beyond the river, the savanna opens again, endless, golden, alive. Herds graze near the horizon. The hunters stalk low, silent. They've learned patience from storms, caution from predators, courage from each other. They raise their spears. This is no chaotic chase now. This is strategy, coordination, intelligence, a hand signal, a breath held. The first spear arcs through the air, a perfect line of motion. It strikes. The herd scatters in panic. The humans run, shouting, driving the injured animal toward the others lying in wait. Another spear flies, then silence. The prey falls. That night, flames dance again. Meat roasts on sharpened sticks. Smoke drifts upward, carrying the scent of triumph. They eat together, not just to live, but to remember. Because tonight is different. The hunt was not luck, it was mastery. For the first time, the balance of power has shifted. The hunters no longer run from every roar in the dark. Now others run from them. And across the savanna, eyes watch. Lions, hyenas, even the silent eagle overhead. Watching as the prey becomes the predator. But the night holds one more secret. Beyond the circle of fire, a pair of glowing eyes watches from the grass. Low, patient, waiting for weakness. The leader grips his spear tighter, gaze fixed on the dark. He knows the struggle never ends. Every victory is borrowed, every dawn uncertain. But for now, they have fire. They have spears. And they have each other. He turns back toward the flames. The eyes vanish. The savanna sleeps. If you could feel their fear, their triumph, their fire, it's because their story never ended. It runs in your pulse. It breathes in your persistence. When you refuse to quit, when you fight for tomorrow, you're carrying their legacy forward. The moment we learn to stand tall, to strike back, 
to become the hunters we were meant to be. Subscribe to Ancestor Flame and walk with them again because the next story waits beyond the firelight.